I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, this is an issue, and the frustration on this side, and it should be on that side, is on the lack of an energy policy that only Congress can solve. I know there's a lot of talk of the speaker just sent a letter to the president, you know, to use the, the spur. That's going to solve the problem. That's not going to solve the problem. In fact, it will the, make the problem worse. We have to address the supply side of this issue. We're not doing it. The last time we produced any new energy on this floor was 1973, when we had an embargo, and we had no fuel. So we passed the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. In, 1970, in 1976, we produced the first barrel of oil to America from Alaska. In three years, we built an 800-mile-long pipeline, 48 inches around. We built the terminus point in Valdez, and I wear that today on my tie. We drilled the wells, and we built the, trans the collection lines to deliver that oil, and we got as high as 2.2 million barrels a day to the United States of America. Because we're under the threat at that time, the same threat we are today, of control by overseas forces. Not forces of military fact, but in fact those that control our supply. At that time we were importing 39% of our oil. 39% from overseas. Today it's 70%. And we've done nothing in this Congress to relieve that problem. And your constituents are paying for it today. There's no shortage of fuel. There's a high cost of fuel because we don't have the domestic capability of providing it. We need to have this debate on the floor. Let us stand up and be counted on both sides of the aisle. Who is for domestic production? There is no shortage of fossil fuel in the United States of America. We have an abundance of it. We've had the lack of will to produce it. It was easier to buy it abroad. We used to have a sale in Alaska other than Anwar and Chuck G.C., about $2.6 billion Bowman Oil Company to try to develop it. Because there's a lot of argument on that side. Well, they're not drilling the, the acreage they have now. You know why they're not drilling? Because your friends and your allies are filing suit, not allowing them to drill. Suits to say, oh, there's going to be polar bears affected. There's going to be some little other type of animal affected. In the meantime, your constituents are paying that $4.62 a gallon. And yes, the oil did drop yesterday, but it will go up tomorrow and the next day because we are not supplying the oil to our people to the domestic source. We have the shale as mentioned in Utah and Wyoming and, and all the other areas of Colorado. Huge amounts of oil. We have more coal in the United States than there is all around the world. And we're not developing it. We have not had the will to develop it because this Congress sits by and talks about saving records of the past administration. Your bill may not do that, but this is what this is all about. And I'm saying that doesn't produce any gas. That doesn't help the truck driver. It costs $2,000 to fill up one Peterbilt truck and delivers your food to your grocery store. Wait till that price starts hitting the prices in the grocery store and it already has. The harvester that harvests the grain today now is paying sometimes as high as 4 and $5 for diesel fuel to run it. And that's going to affect you too. We have not acted on this floor in a responsible way addressing the issue. Now some people will say we'll have the other forms of energy, wind and hippie hoppies and that type of thing to solve the problem. But in reality is fossil fuels drives objects. It's the trucks, the planes, the trains, and the automobiles that are delivered to your homes, your hospitals, and your schools. And we must have that. Yes, we can go into nuclear. Yes, we can go into wind. Yes, we can go into solar. And we go to geothermal and hydro. We can do all those things that we should. My bill, 6107, open ANWR, this, by the way, 12 times it passed this House floor. We won't have a vote on it this year, but we should have a vote. The one time we got out of the Senate, Bill Clinton vetoed it. You got Bill, say, Bill Clinton vetoed it because he said it'll take 10 years, 10 years to produce it. ANWR, 10 years. That was 13 years ago. If we'd built it then, We'd have it pumping a day over a million barrels a day. But no, he didn't do that. Let me stress again, Anwar is in fact 74 miles away from the existing pipeline. 800 miles long, a terminus point, and all the infrastructure in place, and we built that in three years. And if you don't think we can't build a pipeline 74 miles away and drill, drill the oil and get it to that pipeline in three years, you're not studying this fact. 
It can be done for the American people. And I'm asking you on both sides, let's drill, let's develop our domestic sources for the good of America, good of the nation, and make sure we can go forth. We yield back the balance.